it's great to have Omar Ahmed. He's a serial entrepreneur, and now he's a speaker for a new track we created called The Outer Realm, which is out of the world, if you may call it, wacky ideas that are revolutionizing many segments of different industries around us. So Omar, welcome. Thank you. Omar, let's talk about your current venture, which is Sync Energy, of which you're the founder and CEO, doing sure. some interesting stuff. So if you can elaborate. Sure. Uh, Sync Energy was started, uh, now we're about two years old with the idea of how do we deal with greenhouse gases and what we do for greenhouse gases coming from landfills or uh, wastewater facilities. We actually take those gases, which is methane and CO2, and we convert them into high octane gasoline. And we've been doing this now for two years and have been running our fuel unmodified in regular automobiles. About six, nine months from now, we'll have a newer trial where that gasoline is actually going to be working in police cars. And so it's you know, essentially uh, a waste of energy, but locally created fuel working in local applications. You know, people are really excited when you talk about this kind of science, which is converting into commercial business. But could it really be productized and commercialized to a way where a common man can start using regular gasoline? How easy is it to take it to a level where it could be consumed by everyday citizen? Ideally, we're pretty close to that. Uh, the challenges, I think, are going to be uh, one of scale. Uh, what we have found, and I think this is probably one of the issues that the clean tech industry is, is really kind of come to grips with. Uh, there's scale for individuals, there's scale for a city, and then there's sort of the massive scale, uh, which we're also finding in the fundraising environment. The, the VCs and the uh, equity players in this are having a, a challenge saying, well, how much capital do I really require? Uh, there is going to be some innovative thinking around moving smaller. Uh, so the individual in their home trying to do things for themselves, get off the grid, run more fuel efficient, uh, we're still a ways from there. But there is a significant drive and there is a big passion around making that happen. Our, our system is really built more for a municipality. So a, a town, a city, that scale, where thousands of gallons of fuel will make a difference. Uh, for, for example, within San Carlos, uh, we probably use several thousand gallons of fuel in our police cars every month. This is a very easy play for that. So could we fuel our police cars, our ambulances, uh, our other light fleet, and get that completely paid for? And again, this would be sort of the waste recovery. So the nice thing is we're saving money on our budget, we're saving the environment, and putting out clean fuel. So you're not the only player in this field. So when you started, how easy do you think it was to get this? Because people around you must have thought, well, you know, it's still part fiction, part science. Uh, what gave you the confidence to go ahead? Well, what gave me the confidence? <laughs> I don't know that there's one thing. I think if you're an entrepreneur, you you believe in your ideas. You believe in the fact that you've got something and there is a market. Now, without a question, I believed in the goals of the company, that we could do a company that could do very, very well by doing good. We could clean up the environment, we could create jobs, and we could be very profitable those things had to be in place. And when you have those things in place, you've got to believe as an entrepreneur you've got something that can move forward. Well, you're pretty much a serial entrepreneur. You have done a couple of ventures before moving into this area. Correct. So I think a lot of people who want to jump into the clean tech area, mm -hmm. but the investment costs are pretty high. And looking at the significant cost, people kind of shy away. They say, well, maybe that's not a play for me. You probably have this confidence. I'm coming back to the confidence part because you've sure. done this before. Um, so do you think um, it takes a seasoned entrepreneur and the connectivity to get into clean tech as an entrepreneur? Or you think for people out there who are dwelling on this idea because they have the great th you know, technology on their hands but they're kind of shying up because of the investment part of it. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, should propel them to take the next step and jump the bandwagon of the entrepreneurs? It's a great question. I would probably argue that those who are not in the industry uh, will be where the real innovation is going to take place. Uh, for our system, 
it was pretty clear. Everybody said, well, shouldn't you be talking to people who understand refineries or something else like that? Uh, for those IT people in the audience, they would understand the analogy of, you know, you may have really been the guy who built mainframe computers, but if you look at the iPhone, could you have ever designed that? At their heart, they're all computers. They're all memory. It's a storage device. It's I.O., but very, very different. So we are dealing with very different scales. We're dealing with very different applications, and that's going to take innovative thinking. The idea that those innovations are going to come from within the industry is very, very low. It's very likely to come from outside. And to that extent, I think entrepreneurs who have the ideas, you're probably the wave of the future. Let me come to the personal aspect of you. Um, you have done uh, cloud computing 10 years ago before you said the term was you know, phrased. Uh, then you went on to the security aspect of it, now in clean tech. How do you do this? You know, the domain that I think that I, that I bring is uh, spotting a problem and recognizing this is something that I want. There is a group of which I have a great deal of respect who says, this is something that we need. And I think my skills as an entrepreneur, uh, beyond being able to say, here's a problem, is being able to develop a team and a plan to go solve it. As you start to do more companies, you start to realize there are a couple of things that regardless of cloud computing and heavy infrastructure versus clean tech versus chemical versus uh, security, there are things you need to do to build a good company. Hiring good people, leading people efficiently. And you know, when, when you hire good people, get, get out of their way. Uh, those things are universal, and you can move. Uh, of course, you have to get very, very you know, down and dirty into the details and make sure that you understand it and converse it and can have confidence in what you're selling. But uh, those, are, those are skills that transpose all verticals. I don't think uh, you have uh, any less enthusiasm and the zeal and the passion than the next real entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this, along the way, since you've done three now and probably have done many others with uh, joining other people, do you feel you missed a big idea or you spotted it but you kind of slacked on it and you let it go and somebody else picked it? Is there any idea you regret not jumping upon or having missed? that could have been a big one? Ideas, no. I, I think if there's something that I've um, wished I could do better was better timing. Uh, you know, I wish I would have known that the bubble would burst. I wish I would have known some of those things. There's, there's macroeconomic issues that we can't control. But uh, doing these things, moving forward, I, I have absolutely no regrets in any company that I've joined. Um, you know, I, I joined Napster uh, at a point where we were literally being sued by everybody. And there was always a question of, you know, we may only be around for another 30 days. I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. It was intense. It was uh, you know, the experience of learning how to do engineering under a court order is something very unique. Was the timing right? Could I turn around and said, oh, well, geez, I wish we would have thought of iTunes back in the days of, of Napster. Yeah, I wish we would have thought of it. But that experience, how we built, it, trust me, as people go through entrepreneurial ventures, you will learn. And it's not so much that this one didn't work, but are you willing to go back and work hard? Omar, thank you for sharing your thoughts and experiences. It's a pleasure.